Car registration data for China has just been revealed and it shows an interesting success story. One success story and a couple of, well, a couple of almost disasters. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Phenomenal to see you. Hope you've had an amazing week. Thank you for supporting the channel. It's been amazing. Your support's just been incredible. This year, it's definitely been a tough year, but with you guys, we've been able to get through it. And I think things are looking up. Now, things were looking pretty terrible a couple of months ago when we got the diagnosis. But since you guys have helped us so much, it's meant we've been able to afford the best treatment. And Shanna's cancer, her tumors have gone down around, around about 50%. So, hey, it's not gone, but we're certainly trending in the right direction. In China, the world's biggest car market and by far the world's largest electric vehicle sales market, there's a few companies doing well and there's a few companies doing not so well. Who is doing well? Who is doing badly? Well, you know, I am surprised to see that Neon Xpeng are still struggling so much. There's been a lot of hype around these two car companies. Some of it's been from me. In the case of Xpeng, I've always been a big fan of their cars, and I don't understand why they had this epic collapse. I don't think anyone really understands it. Competition, competition, competition. Competition, they said, would mean Tesla would be in big trouble this year in China. I spoke to a couple of experts who live in China, who haven't actually make videos on YouTube and who understand the car market. They said that as well. They said Tesla would be in big trouble in China this year, but it's not actually playing out that way. Tesla appears to be shaking the tree and some people, or at least some car companies, are falling, falling out of the tree. And who knows when they're going to hit the ground and crash, most likely burn. What do I mean by that? I mean, there's a boatload of debt in the car market in China. There's too many car companies, it's ridiculous. There's, there's no foreseeable possible way that this can play out well. Will it play out well in terms of EVs being delivered to customers? Absolutely, it's phenomenal. I mean, you can buy an EV now, there is no question that EVs are on parity on price with gasoline powered cars. If you include the fact that the registration is much easier and cheaper for EVs versus gasoline powered cars, well, they're clearly winning this war hands down. But the automakers, well, a lot of them are really, really suffering. I don't think the strategy they're playing is a good long-term strategy. I don't see how it could work for a lot of them. They don't have limitless money. It's like they think they do. They just keep on spending billions and billions of dollars. Their sales aren't going up for a lot of them. Some of them are, a lot of them are not. What about Volkswagen, BMW, Ford, General Motors? Well, their sales, for the most part, legacy auto sales in China, in the massively growing, EV sector are almost non-existent. I mean, put it this way, of the brands that sell EVs in China, there's a list of the top 18 that comes out every week. The only car manufacturers outside of China in that list, and they're definitely nowhere near the top, are Volkswagen and BMW. Both of those companies obviously selling at pretty tremendous losses. They're selling their EVs so much cheaper than they sell them outside of China. However, at least they're in the list. I mean, you've got Volkswagen in around 10th place with 2,860 sales over the last week. BMW in 12th with 2,365. That's not too bad. But everyone else is nowhere to be seen. There's no Ford. There's no General Motors. There's no Toyota. There's no Honda. There's no Nissan. All these companies were once massive powerhouses in China. Their market share is eroding quickly. For example, Toyota sales in China are down nearly 30% this year. Why? They don't sell any compelling EVs. They just revealed two EVs to the market, the BZ4X, and of course the new BZ3, the Corolla electric car, discounted them massively. They're as cheap as chips. You can buy a BZ4X for 20,000 US dollars, but people are not buying them. Go figure. For the week ending March 26, so for the seven days prior to March 26, insurance registrations for passenger vehicles in China were 400,000. That's an increase of 37.6% year on year. That's a big jump. And it's up 29% from the previous week, according to the Chinese government. Among them, the number of traditional internal combustion engine vehicles was 272,000. That's, that's a pretty big number. But if you think about it, 272,000 
of the 400 car sales were gasoline powered. That means 130,000 of them were electric. That's massive market share and it's growing quickly. That's also a lot of EVs. Insurance registrations, according to cnavpost.com, for new energy vehicles were 128,300, up 27% from last year. And that's without subsidies. The subsidies end EV sales are still up 27%. That's incredible. That means the electric vehicles represent around 30% of all cars sold in China today. That number is clearly growing. BYD, they're doing very well in China. 43,500 vehicles were insured for BYD, meaning BYD probably sold around 45,000 cars over the past seven days in China. That's a massive increase from what they did last year in the same week. The same week last year was half that number. In fact, less than half. And that puts BYD on track for about 180,000 vehicle deliveries in the month of March in 2023. Of those more, unfortunately, more than half of those were plug-in hybrids. The rest of them were EVs. BYD pretty much represents the plug-in hybrid market in Li Auto and BYD put them together. That's that's about 90% of all plug-in hybrids sold in China. That's, that's a good and a bad thing for them. Clearly the future of the car market is not plug-in hybrids. There's plug-in hybrid market share is going down everywhere, all over the world. So the future is not those types of cars. Can BYD pivot quickly to change from making plug-in hybrids to EVs? Yeah, they can. They're very, very fast, incredibly fast. What about Tesla? How are they going? Everyone said they're going to do really badly. Well, Tesla delivered 15,900 vehicles over the past seven days in China. They're on track to deliver 65,000 vehicles over the past four weeks. Most likely they'll deliver just over 70,000 electric cars in China in the month of March. That's a staggering number. March is a very, it's the third slowest month of the year, every single year for the last 20 years in China. It's a really slow month. Uh, the naysayers who said Tesla would be killed in China this year, so far they're looking pretty silly. They're looking like they're being uh, maybe emotional, like they favor one brand versus another. So therefore that's what, that's what caused them to make that prediction. I don't think there's any logical reason to claim that that would happen. And clearly we're seeing Tesla still maintain massive sales in China. Now, unfortunately, Neo car sales haven't increased at all from the same month last year. In fact, they're quite disappointing. Neo is probably going to deliver around about eight and a half thousand electric cars in China. I don't understand Neo's strategy. I really think that in order to maintain their enormous spending, they spend insane amounts of money on Neo houses and all kinds of things, battery development, um, new factories, um, battery swapping machines. Uh, there's This is probably the company on the planet who likes spending more than anyone else. I mean, I'm talking EV company, by the way. It's it's not sustainable, especially when you're only selling this many cars. We, they're selling around 10,000 electric cars per month, 10,000 cars, period. I mean, if let's say they have a bit of a ramp up over the next half of the year, maybe get to 150,000 vehicle sales by the end of the year. It's just nowhere near enough to keep on spending in the way that they are. Xpeng, I like I like Xpeng's strategy a lot more, but their sales are down enormously. They'll probably sell around 7,000 cars in March. Looking at the actual sales over the past seven days, BYD is in first with 43,500. Tesla in second in China with 15,900. GAC Aon, who are the big winners here, have 10,347 sales. Third place, GAC Aon. Now they plan on selling their cars in Europe, in Australia, New Zealand, a few other countries as well, by the end of this year. And so they damn well should. They make some very, very good cars. They have some impressive technology, 480 kilowatt charging speed, mind blowing. I don't know how that's even possible. And they have some really cool battery technology. People clearly like their cars more so clearly than they like Neo or x cars, or at least they perceive them as more affordable. Or I'm not sure what that is, but the reality is GAC's cars, Aeon's cars, they're not budget. They're definitely competing with say x for example. Maybe that's why x are losing so many sales. Chinese people believe that Aeon makes really good product. You're looking at around 40,000 deliveries in the month of April for GAC. This makes them 
possibly the fourth biggest electric car company in the world by the end of this year, if they keep these numbers up. I mean, that's what you'll be looking at. Fourth place in the world. No one's talking about Aon. They should be. They're coming. Now, fourth place in China was Wuling with 6,800 deliveries. The majority of those cars were small micro-based cars, which they only make about $50 on. Anyhow, General Motors owned 33% of that tri-venture between Wuling, SAIC, and and GM themselves. The fifth was Chang'an with 5,300. Then we got Li Auto, plug-in hybrids only with 5,000. Cherry, 3,000. Nita, 2,934. They've had a big drop in sales at Nita. Volkswagen is next with 2,859. Then Geely with a surprisingly disappointing 2,600. BMW, 2,365. Denza, which is basically BYD subsidiary, which Mercedes owned 10% of, had, had 2,365 deliveries, meaning that Denza by itself outsold Neo, Xpeng, Aura, Zika, and Ato, which is Huawei. Now, a lot of people are saying it's time to invest again in Chinese EV stocks. They're saying Li Auto is a, is a winner, Xpeng is a winner, Neo is a winner. You should consider these car companies. I would not be. I think that would be at this point in time a huge mistake. That's my recommendation. Australians don't listen to me. I can't advise you on your stock purchases. Otherwise, I get fined four hundred thousand dollars. But I won't be investing in any of those companies. There's a shakedown going on. The smaller players are going to bleed and bleed hard until they're crushed. That's what they do in China. That's how it will play out. The big ones will win. Clearly, GAC, they are big enough to succeed. Aon, clearly, are popular cars. BYD, Tesla, and Aon, in my view right now, are the only clear-cut winners in this market and the only ones likely to really take big market share from the legacy automakers. Let me know your thoughts, though. Am I right? Am I wrong? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.